In this section, we'll install the Squid server, that's the proxy server, and examine its configuration and implement some of its features. This is a requirement for certification within Red Hat's framework, and it's also a widely used proxy server. A proxy server allows you to proxy or filter outbound requests to the internet, and as a result, you can take advantage of caching and reduce bandwidth utilization and even limit the websites or the content that your users or constituents have access to. Let's label this section Squid Proxy Server. And the features include caching server, filters, access to the net, amongst many other features including, but not limited to, efficient bandwidth usage. So as a result of caching requests, for example, if user 1 accesses a website and user 2 attempts to access the same website, if the website exists or lives in Squid's cache, user 2 and subsequent users will have immediate access or cached access from Squid's cache to the site, consequently reducing or obviating the need for the user to connect to the web directly. And that saves you bandwidth. You may filter access to the net, so you may grant or deny access to specific sites. And as a consequence, it overall promotes efficient bandwidth usage. Since you're able to cache and filter, users aren't always accessing the net directly. In a standard environment, if we take a look at our drawing for a moment, users access the internet directly without any sort of caching mechanism in place or proxying mechanism in place. But with Squid and similar facilities, users are going to check the cache first, and if the object is present in the cache, the user will not have to visit the internet. So on any of these systems, such as this Red Hat Enterprise 5 system that we're on, if we attempt to access the internet, meaning a site or service on the net that Squid caches, such as FTP or HTTP, we go through our internal environment, the intranet, through the central router to the internet directly to the host server. But when Squid is involved or a caching proxy server is configured, our system and others will connect to the internet by way of the caching only instance. We're going to create a caching only instance on our VMware instance of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, then point our Red Hat Enterprise 5 box to the VMware instance running Squid, which will then provide us with access to the net. And we'll be able to test connectivity and the speed of connectivity once the caching is enabled. So let's return to our notes and continue our discussion of Squid. Our first task is going to be, of course, to install it. So install Squid proxy server. And it's relatively straightforward. We'll use yum to do so. If we consult our repository, we'll see the package is simply named Squid. And we'll give that name momentarily once the browser is up. Let's connect to the resource, the server RPM resource. It'll enumerate the contents of the YUM repository momentarily and then provide us access to the items. We'll control F and search for squid and then we see 2.6 being the version that's available. So this is the package we'd like to install. Let's return to the shell. We can install it using the, its name, its unique portion of course. And we'll return to the shell on the remote system and execute yumy install squid. And this will attempt to install it from the repository using a regular expression match, including any dependencies if necessary. So there we see squid has been installed. And now when we RPM query list squid, we'll see all of its components. Scrolling towards the top of the squid output, We'll see the main components, including its config file. And it's exceeded our screen, screen, so if we dump it to less, we'll see it one page full at a time. So here's the configuration that's currently set up. Beneath HTTPD, confd, there's a squid entry so that you can access the cache manager 
via the browser, which gives you a sense for how Squid's performing. There's a log rotate entry, as Squid maintains, log files which can easily grow to an unmanageable size. There's a PAM entry which allows for or facilitates authentication. Squid runs as its own service, so there's an initialization.d entry. There's a primary configuration container, etc squid. So we've installed it. Let's just note yumy install squid. And this is the primary configuration container for directory, beneath which we'll find the primary configuration file squid.conf, amongst others, including one for the cache manager, for MIME translations, and others. Squid, in fact, is a proxy server which functions like a web server, like a reverse web server. So it performs similar tasks in translating content access when using HTTP, FTP, and other supported protocols. So it needs to be able to do some of the things that a standard web server can do, such as translate file types or supply clients with appropriate MIME types for a given file type and various mix and matches. So this is the primary top-level container, but the main config file is a squid.conf file, squid.conf. So this is the primary configuration file. This is the file that you make changes to to enable or disable access to the internet or through the squid proxy server as access is disabled by default. There's a default file, which you can peruse, compare and contrast against the existing file that's published. There's a startup file beneath etc sysconfig and this is ssh with another session over to this machine so that we can examine some of the files while we're going through the list. And in this directory we'll find a squid startup file which includes options that squid is to honor when starting. There's also a directive that Squid reads upon startup that it uses when it shuts, and that is the amount of time that it's to wait before shutting, which makes sense because you may have active connections flowing through the server when you initiate a shut. When Squid starts, it starts with the option D, which disable, and that's uppercase D, which disables DNS checks. Whenever possible, when configuring Apache, Squid, or similar services, disable any sort of name lookup that could impede performance. Beneath user lib squid, there's a CGI process, cache manager CGI, which is referenced beneath the Apache configuration directory, which we'll look at after we have the server up and running. It includes various modules for various purposes, such as NTLI manager authentication, IP user checks, get password names, and other items. And because Squid is modular, it includes items for authentication to different facilities like Microsoft's NT or NT LAN Manager or NCSA, as well as YP, WP Info, which is WB Info, that is, which is a way of getting group information via Perl script. So Squid is modular. It provides a way to plug into various authentication methods. It also includes a client which can be used to test the proxy. This is an important component used to test proxy server, and in particular the Squid proxy server. Squid client. We'll use that momentarily once we have it up and running. There's documentation which includes comprehensive documentation in HTML form. There are a list of error files that are referenced if a user attempts to access content the user hasn't no access to, then Squid will return the errors in various languages. See listed here. And if you scroll through this list A through Z towards the end, then you'll see the remaining GIF files and the primary log directory, var log squid. Primary log directory. 
So out of this large configuration, the things that are important to you when pursuing certification and just for your own intents and purposes is to, is to have a sense of the default container, the default config file, the client which is used to test the server, and where Squid performs its logging. Everything else is above and beyond and can be determined after Squid's up and running. Now how do we ensure that Squid allows access through in its default configuration? Well first and foremost, let's ensure that Squid starts and that it's set to start up when the system reboots. So start Squid and ensure that it starts when the system reboots. These are easy tasks. First we'll service and again, we'll extract the name from init D. We know it to be squid, but let's just confirm it. etc init D squid is the name of the service, which means service squid start will do the trick, followed by a check config 3.5 for run levels 3 and 5 squid on. We'll ensure that squid starts when the system is rebooted or switches run levels. So, with that said, let's service squid status first to see whether or not it's running. It should not be. And then we'll service squid start. This starts the squid caching server. It sets up its cache beneath var spool squid. And one thing we should note regarding squid or any proxy server is that you are to be sure that you have ample disk storage in the spool directory. Squid expects enough disk storage, especially in busy environments. So ensure that ample disk storage. We should also note not only ample, but fast disk storage is available for var spool squid. As squid caches the contents of web pages visited by users beneath the structure of var spool squid. So indeed it is an important location. And we'll just note cache directory container. So as users request content off the net, Squid caches that content beneath var spool squid. So it'd be prudent for you to run df h to see how your var partition is set up. In our case, our var partition has 1.8 gigs, but for all intents and purposes, this is more than enough space. Ideally, in your setting, place your var mount point or mount var spool squid specifically on a fast volume, such as one configured using LVM or perhaps RAID level 0, etc. And as we've just recently done, the server is started. We can confirm the such using netstat ntlp grep squid. You'll see that it binds once we get the netstat command properly run to port 3128. So by default, squid binds to port 3128. Note squid defaults to TCP 3128. This becomes important when you configure your client, your web browser client, whether it be a text-based browser or a graphical browser. A text-based browser also includes WGET. Many programs